Alright, so boom. You ever mourn somebody you never met? I've only felt that two other times in my life. When Kobe passed away and when Eddie Guerrero passed away. And today, as you saw in the news, creator of Dragon Ball, Akira Toriyama died at age 68. And I am not well. Because it makes you really feel weird. Like now we've gotten to the age, at least I have, I'm fixing to be 30 this year, where your childhood heroes are starting to pass away. And it feels very, very bizarre. Because Dragon Ball Z, like, shaped half or maybe even, dare I say, 90% of my personality. Like, a lot of people will look at it like, yo, it's just a cartoon or it's just an anime. It's just a television series. Consider what Dragon Ball Z was. Not just at its peak, but still till this day. When you think of cartoons, you think of anime, I don't think there's a single series that was bigger than Dragon Ball Z or above all else, more influential than Dragon Ball Z. Like Toriyama might as well be the father of anime at this particular point. Cause when you really think of who he inspired, who he was essentially like a mentor to with the biggest animes in the world, it's him. And here we are on the day of his death and you take a look across social media, people sharing stories of what Dragon Ball Z meant to them, what the characters, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, what these guys meant to them. And I'm just sitting here reminiscing like some of my fondest memories, some of the greatest moments of my life had been sitting around in the living room of my parents' crib on this pregnant big back TV playing PS2, GameCube, of Budokai Tenkaichi 3, any of the Tenkaichis really, Budokai in and of itself. Like I literally bought Budokai 3 for PS2 two years ago in the 2020s just so I could relive playing the classic games. I still have all of my Dragon Ball Z games. Till this day, I still buy Dragon Ball Z apparel entering my 30s, bro. Like, think about what Dragon Ball Z meant for kids growing up. It was more than just sitting down and being entertained by a television series. It taught you love. It taught you perseverance. It taught you strength. It taught you pride. It taught you discipline. Like, everything the characters stood for, they all had different stories. Like, my favorite character of all time is Vegeta. I've gone on the record and said I believe Vegeta is the greatest character ever written across all of television, cinema, whatever you want to call it. I, me and Vegeta, we like, here, yeah, bro. People feel certain ways about Goku. You watch the show and you get fully immersed in everything about it. Like, really think about your lowest points in life. I remember when I was a kid, I had moments in which I felt like I was at the low of the low. You know where I drew inspiration to pull myself out of the, Dragon Ball Z? You'd look at people like Goku, Vegeta, Krillin, Gohan, whoever it may have been, they all faced adversity. And rather than, you know, turn away or run away from the challenge that was in front of them, they rose up to it and fought for not only what they believed in, but fought to overcome it. And more often than not, they did. They taught me failure not necessarily wasn't an option because failure is going to happen. But you can't just sit there, lay on, you know, rest on your laurels and just take it. You got to be able to fight back. Vegeta taught me pride on the positive side. Because, of course, there were moments in which the pride gets the best of you. And you've seen him take countless L's, which I do till this day believe, you know, Akira Toriyama hold him. He didn't even want to keep the character going. But because of the on love, or I should say the, 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 the love and support from the community for the character Vegeta, he kept Vegeta around, which I'm so grateful for. Like, really consider what this man taught me pride, bro. Like, I, I'm not going to say I would have never cared about my family or the lineage or all that other stuff. But it got emboldened because of Vegeta. So then I could sit around and want to take care of the fam and my brother and all this. Stuff. I probably, if I never was introduced to Dragon Ball Z, dare I say, I probably don't do that. I may run away from the nest completely. But it was the connection with Dragon Ball Z that ended up, you know, making something like that happen sooner than later, per se. Watching characters time after time rise against their opposition, even when they were afraid. It taught me courage. Think of the Z Fighters. Yamcha get washed every opportunity. Under the sun, they was getting their ass whipped by the Cybermen. 
Yamcha stepped up and he got murked. Tien, Cell Saga. Remember when he stood up to second form Cell? He was shooting the goddamn the tri beam at this. Everybody under the sun knew he, he stood no chance. But man's had courage. Vegeta at the point in which we've seen time after time, taking L after L after L after L after L, embarrassment after embarrassment, he still would rise up, stand up, and fight. And, and at the end, he acknowledges Karaka or Kakarot being the better of the two. It didn't feel good as a Vegeta fan, but he acknowledged it. Like there's so much you can learn from the series, and I'm sitting here just bent because this man passed away. I will never forget when Dragon Ball Super came back damn near a decade ago now, what was it, 2015, 2016? There were grown adults crying, recording their reaction to the opening theme music, crying that Dragon Ball Z is back, bro. I'll never forget being a kid running home from school to turn on the television and watch Dragon Ball, bro. This shit is insane. I remember re-watching the series, waking up at 3 a.m., in junior high, high school, just to go and binge as many episodes as I possibly could before my mom got up to go to work. I'll never forget this. I'd watch three episodes per hour because it was about 21, 22 minutes without commercials. I would go to sleep at maybe about like 10, 11 p.m. on like little hours of sleep, maybe about like five, six hours of sleep. All you needed, when you was a kid, you really didn't need to sleep. Remember Vent Life? That was the thing going on, but we ain't talking about that right now. One way or another. The series and Toriyama meant so much to me, bro. And here it is on the day of his death. And I just, I feel weird, bro. I feel, I feel like I lost a friend. I thought I lost a brother. I lost like, like, like a, a, a damn father at this particular point. Like I called my dad today. We spoke on the phone for like 35 minutes, just talking about life. He has no clue who Toriyama is or whatever the case is. But I felt like, damn, yo, I gotta, I gotta talk to my pop. We talk every day anyway. But this was just an extremely extended conversation just because I, I felt like, yo, I gotta talk to somebody, bro. It, it feels weird. And scrolling through social media and reading everybody's story of what Dragon Ball meant to them is just like, yo, this dude brought people together. Like you think about in the richest of rich suburbs to the hoodest of hood for lack of better terms everybody was fully immersed in dragon ball z dragon ball culture you could have somebody who is sitting at 60 million and somebody who is you know negative two thousand dollars you put on dragon ball i promise you the two could sit together watch the show laugh together probably dap each other up he had people toriyama that is trying to go super sane in their basement Moreover, in a living room in front of family, basement by yourself, living room in front of family, and in public. One of the greatest YouTube videos ever created was, I think that dude's name was uh, Jaden. I'll never forget this. Homie trying to go Super Saiyan screaming, got the edit and all the other stuff. One of the most hilarious things I've ever seen in my life. We don't get that without Akira Toriyama and Dragon Ball, bro. Like this, this is crazy till this day. You know how many people were inspired to go to the gym because of Dragon Ball Z? The countless amounts of training. People still think they could get that, get that physique and all the other stuff. People over here, the bromance is the brotherhood that was created behind Dragon Ball Z, training, pushing each other. The amount of communities of people who check in on each other to make sure, hey man, you on your grind, you on top of what you said you was gonna do, I'm gonna be here. Accountability partners based off of what transpired in the series of Dragon Ball Z, bro. You know how much people was inspired to raise their children in like the light of Gohan and Goten and Trunks? The fatherhood that was inspired by Dragon Ball's man, it's it's wild, bro. I got a Vegeta right here. I keep a Vegeta with me right here, bro, at all times, just to keep me, you know, sane per se, and keep te teach me to keep going. Because when you deal with adversity, you don't quit, you don't lay down, you take your lumps, you take the L, but you don't let that be the final destination of everything, bro. It's just. This is just a weird feeling, man. It's, it it feels like the day that Kobe died. It feels like the day that Eddie Guerrero died, bro. I'm over here mourning the dude I never met. 
never really had an opportunity to tell homie thank you. I know millions upon millions of people right now wish there was a way that they could pen the letter to Akira Toriyama to say thank you for the memories, thank you for the influence of Dragon Ball Z and the entire doggone series. So I don't want to be too long-winded on it because I'm sitting over here just reminiscing moments. Like one of my one of my closest friends passed away when I was nine. And um, he loved, uh, loved Dragon Ball Z. And now I think of the afterlife and everybody being in the same particular room and he's got a chance to meet him, you know? So, boy, I guess I say all that to say, rest in peace to Akira Toriyama. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for Dragon Ball Z, man. Mm.